Hey, what's up everyone? In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can turn renders like this into this. Before the video starts, if you like the sound of having your name at the end of videos, video files, extra tutorials, critiques and more, you can support me on Patreon. Link is below. Thanks. Now I am obviously going to be using Photoshop for this tutorial, but if you don't have Photoshop, there's plenty of other alternatives you can use, for example GIMP, Photopea or Pixlr E. Uh, the bottom line is you should just be using something to post-process your renders. And I've heard of some people who don't like to post-process their renders because it feels like cheating. Well, at the end of the day, images are just a bunch of pixels and it is your job to make them look as good as possible. So I don't see any reason why you shouldn't. Now let's get started with the tutorial. So the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate this layer with Ctrl J. So now I'm going to apply a camera raw filter. So I'm going to hit shift control A. You can only do this in Photoshop, but you should be able to match this with adjustment layers in some other software. So I'm going to open up basic and I'm going to start off by tweaking the exposure a bit. I think it should go up a little bit, but make sure you're looking at your image while you're doing this and seeing what looks good, what looks bad. And don't adjust these too much. You just want to adjust them a little bit and not overdo it. So if you're using Photoshop, don't touch the contrast because I'm going to show you something else you can do later. But if you aren't, feel free to change the contrast. So I'm going to fill with the highlights a bit there and the shadows. Just really see what looks good for your render. So I'm liking that. So I'm going to change the vibrance and saturation. Be quite careful of these ones if you have a lot of color. It can make it look good, but not if you overdo it. So next what I'm going to do is go and select the brush and I'm going to up the texture and the clarity a bit and also the sharpness. Don't overdo the sharpness because we're already doing clarity. And what I'm going to do is just brush around the model. Now you don't really see this while you're doing it, but you'll see when we go and apply this that there's actually quite a big difference um, in comparison to what we had before. So the next thing I'm going to do is add a color balance adjustment layer. So I'm going to select that. And what this allows us to do is change the colors of different parts of our image. So what I'm going to do is called split toning. So which means you change the highlights and shadows color to be different. So for the highlights, I'm going to give it a reddish tint, not too much. And now for the shadows, I'm going to change it to blue. Again, not too much, even less for this one. And I think that looks pretty good. The next thing I'm going to do is add a selective color adjustment layer. So what this allows us to do is pick a specific color and change it. So I do not want red. I'm going to go to black. And I'm just going to up the cyan a little bit because I want it to look blue. And I'm going to bring the yellows down a little bit because subtracting from yellow is blue, if that makes sense. I think that's a bit too much. Just one. Okay, there we go. The next thing I'm going to do is add a curves adjustment layer. So what curves allows us to do is target specific areas of the image and make them lighter or darker. So down here is the shadows, here's the midtones, and up here is the highlights. So I'm going to start by clicking here to make a point and change the uh, shadows. I don't want it too dark. Okay, mid-tones. see. Okay, I like that. For the highlights. Let's see. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do next is optional. You might not want this for your scene or it might not suitable, but I'm going to add some smoke. So what I'm going to do is add an empty layer. Now I'm going to hit B to go to the brush panel. I'm going to open the brush panel. And you can see how I've just got some cloud brushes online. You can find them all over the place, uh, free ones. So I'm going to close this. And I'm just going to click once or twice around the gun. And there you go. You can see that's looking pretty good. Now that's too strong there. So I'm going to lower the opacity bit. Oh, that's too much. We don't want to overdo it. Okay, I like that. 
So now what I'm going to do next is another thing that you might not always have to do and this is content aware fill. So what that allows us to do is remove something from the image. So this could be say like a spot of light or something on the object that you decide you don't want anymore. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So select the layer you want and bear in mind this cannot be a smart layer, it just has to be a regular layer. So now I'll go up to edit. Oh, sorry, we do first have to make a selection. That was silly of me. So I'm going to go to the lasso tool and I'm going to choose this little bit. Okay, so now I'll go edit, content aware fill. So now you can just hit OK and you'll see just like that it's gone. Now I actually want this back because uh, this is the tutorial. I'm just showing you how to do it but that's how you'd remove something if you wanted it gone. So now the next thing I'm going to do is add some text. So I'm going to hit T to go to the text tool. Oops. And now I'm going to type my brand name, CG Life. Okay. I'll open it back up. And I think I want a white color on it. So I'm going to come up here and change it to a full white color. So now I'm going to drag it down in the bottom corner somewhere. If you hold control, it allows you to move it without it snapping, so you can uh, place it very precisely. So what I think I'm going to do is lower the opacity, because that stands out far too much. We just want it to be subtle. I'm going to move it a bit more. Okay, I like that. And you can uh, screw around with the font, but I like this one. Uh, actually, I will change it. I'm going to use Ethnocentric. You can find fonts on places like Dafont or anywhere really. And download them. Okay, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to select this layer. Hit Control J to duplicate it. And I'm going to bring it over here. Now for this one I'm just going to make up a name, you can put whatever you want. I'm going to put XN-15. That looks pretty cool. So I'm going to, I want this one to be a little bit bigger than the other one. I think it's the right size, I think I'll just make this one smaller. Okay, and I'll come up here. I don't want it too small and see if you can get it aligned with the other one there we go okay and there we go so now this next thing you can only do in Photoshop but if you have Photoshop it is definitely worth it so this is changing the contrast so to do that we're going to use Color Effects Pro 4 so this is included in the Nick collection so you can get this for free. So what you want to do is go to this link here. And then you want to put in your email address and hit submit. From there you'll be able to run the exe file and go to your Photoshop plugins folder. And then you can install it. Once you've done that you can go to filter, knit collection, Color Effects Pro 4, and it must be a smart object. Oh, whoops, we're on the text layer. So I'm going to go to this layer here. Actually, before we do that, it is a good idea to combine all this because this will be the last step. So I'm going to hold Shift and click on the top one, to select it all. And now I'm going to hit Control Shift Alt E. Oops, made a pop up. Try that again, Control shift alt e and you'll see it merges it all together and creates a layer, but it keeps all of this together. So now, this needs to be a smart object for this to work. Okay, so once that's done, I'm going to go to Filter, in the Collection, Color Effects Pro 4. So I'll wait for that to load up. Okay, here we go. I'm going to click later, still loading there, 
okay so now what I'm going to do is go down to pro contrast where is it here it is so don't go overboard with this but I'm just gonna put correct contrast up a bit and also these shadows and click OK and excellent so you'll see it's applied that smart filter down there and it's looking really good so the final thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to a camera raw filter so shift control A wait for that to load and I'm going to add a vignette so you can find that under effects and vignette and we want the edges to be darker at least I do so we're going to move it down not up we don't want this to be too strong that's too strong but just about there it's too little okay I think I like that And there you go guys, that's how to Photoshop your renders inside of Photoshop. And like I said, you can use any software you want. So there's for software like GIMP. I don't use GIMP because personally I think the fact that it lacks adjustment layers is just too big of a deal breaker. But you can use something like Photopea, which is online and I think is actually very close to Photoshop. So I would definitely recommend trying out that if you can. So alright guys, that wraps it up for today. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to subscribe. And if you'd like the PSD file for today's tutorial and a bunch of other stuff, you can support me on Patreon. And thank you to everyone who is already supporting me. And I'll see you in the next video.